this video, I will be doing isotopes, relative atomic mass, difficult exam examples. So if you missed my first video on isotopes, relative atomic mass, you're going to want to watch that one first before attempting the more difficult exam examples. Let's jump right into those. But first, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now. I do maths, I do science and I can't wait to see you in more videos. Our first question is as follows. A certain element X has two isotopes in nature. One atomic has an atomic mass of 106,9 AMU. The unit is AMU. The percentage of this isotope is 50%. The other one has an atomic mass of 109.1. First question, define the term isotope. This is a definition that you need to learn. And it is atoms of the same element they have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. And what you can also say is that the number of protons are the same. That's why the atomic um, number is the same, but they have a different number of neutrons. Okay, so that is your definition. Two marks. Then calculate the relative atomic mass of element X. And this is five marks. So you start up with your formula, which is this over here. And what this question wants is the relative atomic mass. So they want this part over here. They say that there's two isotopes, so you're going to have two brackets, that bracket and that bracket. My first isotope, they tell me, is element, okay, so it's element X, its first isotope has an atomic mass of 106.9 atomic mass units, and they say the percentage appearance or the percentage abundance of this isotope is 50%. So you sub in the percentage, which is 50%, times the mass number, which is 106, comma 9, then plus, this is isotope number 1. The second isotope, they don't tell me the percentage abundance of this isotope, but you should know that the percentages of the isotopes will add up to 100. So if you've got two isotopes and the one is 50%, the percentage abundance of the other one has to be 50%, because 50% plus 50% gives me 100% overall percentage appearance or percentage abundance. So although they don't explicitly say that the second isotope has a percentage abundance of 50%, we know that it must be 50%. So it'll be 50% plus this is your um, your atomic mass of the other one, 109 comma 1, and my formula says I must divide by 100. So you type it in as is on your calculator. Please note that we don't substitute the percent sign in here. Because we are dividing by 100, that is where we basically take care of the fact that we're subbing in percentages. Just take note that in your bracket, it must say times. So times, like the formula says times. And I get 108 atomic mass units. That is my relative atomic mass of this unknown element X. That is apparently worth five marks in this question. That's quite a lot of marks for a question like this. But we can allocate to formula substitution and arriving at your answer. Then they say identify element X in question 4.1.2. Now remember when we work out the relative atomic mass, this is basically the atomic mass number on the periodic table. It's the big number that you see on your periodic table. Remember you have your atomic number, which is the small number. You have your atomic mass number, which is the big number. So we need to look at our periodic table and look at which element has an atomic mass of 108. And if you have a look at the periodic table, remember we're looking at the big numbers at the bottom because that is approximate relative atomic mass. If you look for 108, you will see over here that it is Ag, which is silver, because you can see over here 108. So when we identify the element in the question, the element is Ag or silver. And that's it. Let's go to a more difficult one. We're building on the difficulty as the questions go along. Let's take a look at this question. Now, as we go along with the questions, we will build on the level of difficulty. This one says natural chlorine consists of Cl35 and Cl37. The relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. Calculate the percentage of Cl35 in natural chlorine. Now, immediately this question is more difficult because they're telling you the answer. Remember, let's take a look at our formula quickly. Our formula says relative atomic mass. This is the answer. Relative atomic mass, that is what appears on the periodic table or a rounded or version of it appears on the periodic table. Relative atomic mass. So in this question, they're giving me that answer. In easier questions, you have to work that out. 
But here we're working backwards. They're giving me the answer and they're going to ask us one of these things. So the relative atomic mass is 35.5. The answer is given to me. They tell me that I have two isotopes, Cl35 and Cl37. So I'm going to have two brackets. One of them is going to correspond to Cl35 and one of them is going to correspond to Cl37. Now remember, the 35, that is the mass number. Okay, so the 35 is the mass number of the first isotope and the 37 is the mass number of the second isotope. But what is this question asking? It's asking me for the percentage of Cl35. So I'm looking for a percentage. So, so far what I know is the mass number of the first isotope is 35 and I know the mass number of the second isotope is 37. But what I don't know is the percentages. And yes, what a lot of my students will say to me is, ma'am, can we make the percentage X? Yes, you can. However, think about this very carefully, grade tens. Did they say anywhere in the question that the percentages are equal, that Cl35 and Cl37 have equal percentages? No, they didn't. They didn't say Cl35 and Cl37 have equal percentage abundances. They didn't say that they exist in the same amount in nature. So we can't call Cl35's percentage X percent and Cl37's percentage X percent. We can't, we can't call them the same percentage because if I'm calling them both X, so if I had to substitute both of them in the formula as X, because remember, I'm looking for percentage, percentage abundance. That's my unknown. If I had to call them both X, that is incorrect because if they're both X, we're assuming that they're the same. So if X is 10 over here, then you're telling me the other one is also 10 because X is X. They're not the same. Nowhere in the question does it say that they're both equal. So what you can do is you can call Cl35X. You can do that. So we can leave Cl35 as X, X percent. However, what will the percentage be for Cl37? This is where it can get a bit tricky. So you need to do this on the side of your page as a little working out. Remember what I said earlier in the video? I said if you have two isotopes, those percentages together must equal 100. Okay, 100% 100 abundance. So basically, the percentage of Cl35 35, plus the percentage of Cl37, add those together, it must give me 100. Let me write it nice and big for you. So together, these percentage abundances need to give me 100%. So if I had to say X plus X equals 100, it won't be true. Like I said, they're not equal in abundance. So what we did, remember, is we called Cl35 X. So this one is X plus this one. I'm going to call it unknown. Okay, you can call it Y if you want. I'm just going to call it question mark equals 100%. How would I then figure out this one's percentage? Remember, Cl35, I called X. Okay, so I'm going to sub that in the formula as X. But how would I work out this one's percentage? Well, what I would do is I would say, if I want to get this one's percentage, X plus question mark equals 100. Question mark will equal 100 minus X. Okay, so what we have, what we're going to put in our formula is the following. Cl35, I said that percentage abundance was X. And Cl37, that percentage abundance is going to be 100 minus X. I hope this makes sense because this is the trick that we use in order to solve for the different percentage abundances. So when I sub it in to my formula, this one is going to stay X. This one over here, this percentage over here is going to be 100 minus X. Okay, that's what makes this difficult. And then we divide by 100. And this is the equation that we need to solve now. Remember, the question says calculate the percentage of Cl35 and natural chlorine. We called the percentage X. So we need to now solve for X. I'm going to do the math for this on a clean page so we can do it together. So I can make sure you know how to do the math. Because actually, once you've subbed in all the values, all the physics is done. The rest of the work is math. So let's do it. Okay, we need to solve for X. We need to get X by itself. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to clean up the top of the fraction. I'm going to just neaten it up a little bit. So as you should know, X times 35 is 35X. You can write it like that. Then 
plus. Now take a look carefully at the second term at the top of this fraction over here. We have 100 minus x and it must be in brackets times 37. We may as well rewrite it like this. 37 times 100 minus x. Or maybe you're used to seeing it in math like this. Okay, it's 37 multiplied by the bracket. Now, what you do in math if you see a situation like this? You need to distribute the 37 into the bracket. So 37 times 100 and 37 times minus x. You don't even need to write it out like I've done here on the side. You can just distribute it like this. So 37 times 100, which is 3700, 3, okay? And then 37 times negative x, which is negative 37x. And all of that is over 100. Now, how would you move on? What would your next step be? Remember, you're trying to get the x's alone. You're solving for x. What I would do next is, do you see that on this side of the fraction, we've got divide by 100. So this is divide by 100. When you take that 100 over, what's the opposite of divide by 100? Times by 100. So we're going to say 35.5 times 100, basically. Okay, and what is 35.5 times 100? I'll do it in the next line. But when we've taken the divide by 100 over, it becomes times 100. At the top of our fraction, we're left with this. Okay, so I'm doing this in baby steps just to set, show you how it's done. Obviously, you can skip the unnecessary steps. But then what you do is you say 35.5 times 100, and you get 3550. And then you do like terms on this side. So you've got 35x minus 37x is negative 2x plus 3,700. Then we're going to take the 3,700 over. So it's going to be 3,550 minus 3,700 equals negative 2x. And I know you're probably panicking because you're like, oh my gosh, why do we have negative x? We're going to solve it now. When you do the subtraction on the left-hand side, you get negative 150 equals negative 2x. And now still, this is where a lot of my students go wrong still in maths. Um, I have to remind my grade, tens, uh, um, my, my grade 10 math students all the time about this. If you have times negative 2, you need to do the opposite of times negative 2. You want to take the negative 2 over. It's times negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. You need to divide by negative 2. So it's negative 150 divided by negative 2. That gives me x. So x is 75%. What this means is that CL, you need to do a little conclusion for me at the end. You need to tell me CL35. Remember CL35? In the beginning, we called CL35x. So CL35 will have 75% percentage abundance. That's what the question wanted. But if they wanted to know what is the percentage abundance of CL37, remember we said CL37 was 100 minus X. So 100 minus 75, which is 25%. And it makes sense because if you add these two together, it gets you 100%. If you want to see more difficult isotopes questions like this one, check out the next video in this playlist. And I also have videos on easier ones. If you missed that first video, all the links in the description box below. I hope to see you for more videos. Subscribe for more. Bye, everybody.